Hola, welcome to my channel Clear Vision. My name is Simon and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a human being making his way through life and also I draw on all of my experiences as a psychotherapist. As always, please like and subscribe and leave any feedback in the comments section and I will um, attempt to get back to all of you. This week's video is about, uh, and I've been asked this quite a lot in the therapy room, this week's video is about why do we look at um, the situation, then the thoughts, and then the feelings, and then the bodily sensations? Why do I get people to do that? Why should we do that? Why, why is that a good idea? So, some things to bear in mind when uh, considering the answer to this question is, first of all, the eyes are a separate um, nervous system and brain, as is the stomach. There's a wonderful book, I can't remember who the author is now, but there's a wonderful book called The Body Keeps the Score, and in it is all the research and the explanations about how, in most situations, most traumatic situations, or most situations which are difficult, the body is one step ahead of the cognition. The body is already feeling it. And so this is partly why therapists, and um, if you're trying to um, work on yourself, these are, these are, this is a really good exercise and skill set to have. Predominantly, it builds uh, self-awareness, and an increase in self-awareness is never a bad thing. It also increases um, attunement to one's own body, and as I mentioned before, there are separate nervous systems which operate together, and so it begins to physically integrate, as well as emotionally and uh, psychologically integrate various parts of the individual back together, so they're kind of regulating and operating together. So basically, it brings self-regulation, it helps increase uh, self-awareness, it increases uh, self-attunement, um, and you become more mindful of your s entire self, holistically, and you begin to operate, as the Gestaltist was referred to, in, in a state of homeostasis, which is basically everything's operating together, affecting it, everything else, and therefore you can promote self-regulation, um, et cetera, et cetera. Why, how do we do this and why do we do this? And you can do this at home or you can do this with your therapist. If you take a situation, the first thing that we tend to do as humans is we tend to stay with the situation, the situational things that happened, the things that were said. So we stay with cognition. Now cognition for most people is a lot easier than actual emotion. What's happening behind the, or alongside the cognition is the emotion. So what I tend to do with clients and what you can do with yourself is, is this depth of exploration. So you can begin to go, okay, so this happened, they said this, I said that, they did this, I did that. This is how I reacted. And then you can look at your feelings and often we go into thoughts first. This situation is toxic. This situation is ridiculous. This situation is affecting me. This situation is unhealthy. This person is being a narcissist. This person is being that. Okay, so we go with the thoughts and those thoughts are an analysis of the situation and help govern how we then react. But it's all on a cognitive level. If you dig under that, you will find feelings. And if you find yourself saying, well, I feel that they're pretty um, uh, arrogant person, that's a thought. So you correct yourself and you can do this in your journal. What's the feeling under that? Well, I feel agitated, I feel frustrated, I feel angry, I feel hurt, I feel sad, I feel joyous, I feel whatever you feel, emotionally, acknowledge it. And then the next step on this depth of exploration of self is to begin to look at the bodily sensation that goes with such a feeling. So you have to take yourself right out of the narrative, right away from the story, give yourself a helicopter view of the situation first, and then begin to dive deeper. So into the thought, out of the situation, into the thoughts, from the thoughts into the feelings, from the feelings into the bodily sensations, the physical manifestation of it. From there you can establish, oh, well actually, what happens is I get tight in the chest, I find it difficult to breathe. There's an anxiety, it makes me feel sick in my stomach. Or there's an anger which begins as a heat deep in my stomach, or my legs begin to shake, or my hands begin to shake. 
And often you'll find yourself disappearing back into thoughts. Well, when that happens, of course, then I'm afraid of conflict and because I can only deal with conflict if I get really, really angry and terrorize the other person. So I'm afraid of myself or, or whatever might go on or I might cry or... So we go back into thoughts, bring it back down, bring it back into emotions, bring it back into feelings. These help because these, this, you know, lurching of the stomach, this heat building up in oneself, this shaking, this anxiety, the headache, the, the mist, whatever it is, physical sensation you're experiencing will happen, guarantee it, before you acknowledge the cognition and most likely before you acknowledge the feeling that goes with it. What, once you've begun to understand what's happening with your entire system is you can then begin to recognize next time you're in a similar situation, what is going on for you? I'm beginning to feel the heat. I'm beginning to feel my chest tighten. And you know the consequences of that. You are unable to talk, you rage, you cry, you, whatever you do to react to those situations. Now you've got the precursor. Now you've learned something about yourself. This is this is this is a um, you know uh, th this is a signal that something's going on, and I know that this signal comes from feeling this way, and feeling this way comes from such a situation and such thought patterns. So the whole idea of uh, and the, so the last part of this is about slowing people down, slowing yourself down, taking yourself through situational. Uh, situational happenings bit by bit because we tend to as I said we tend to think through it so we tend to go yeah well they're just an arsehole so um, and they just piss me off and make me angry but that doesn't tell you anything particularly it just tells you how you're an analyzing the situation how you're kind of justifying um, in a nice way uh, your reactions now if you explore your reactions and the reactions that are out of your awareness the, re the reactions that happen unconsciously now you gain more knowledge about yourself. Now you can care for yourself a bit more. Now you can prevent yourself entering into certain cycles. And you slow the whole thing down. What happens before, what happens during, and what happens after. And this is all brilliant stuff for journaling or for going through with a therapist. What will result is, as I said, more attunement to the self, a, a, a greater level of self-awareness, and an ability to master yourself in certain situations and an awareness of bring that awareness of choice that everybody goes on about you have a choice how to react in a situation it brings about the ability to recognize that choice realize that that choice is now upon you and then to begin to act on it I hope that helps as I said before please like and subscribe it really does help the channel in the meantime before I see you again uh, please take care of yourselves adios